Howdy everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am just left my campsite and inlet and it was uh, sunny, but now I just drove through heavy, heavy rains. I'm on my way to Twitchell Lake, which is way up on the other side of Big Moose Lake where I paddled last year. Um, Twitchell Lake is the former home of probably the Adirondacks most famous woman, Anne LaBestille. She was an author, environmentalist, conservationist, and she was on the Adirondack Park Agency, a commissioner for the Adirondack Park Agency for several years. And so she lived up here by herself, other than with her German Shepherds. I'm heading over to where she lived. Her cabin's no longer there, but i um, heading over to where she lived and check the site out myself. So follow along. All right, well, we made it back to Twitchell Lake. And, uh, of course, just when they start to get the kayak down, what do we get? We get thunder and lightning. It's not a good idea to be out on the lake and lightning. Um, I've been caught in thunderstorms before, so that, that the rain doesn't really bother me. Uh, but uh, I think I'm still going to uh, drop the kayak down and see what happens. Stay tuned. <laughs> So, I got to Ann's place, and guess what? The skies have opened up. One of her old uh, buildings is still standing here, so we're taking refuge under that. But this right over here is where her cabin used to be, that they called, uh, west of, she called, West of the Wind. And you... Once the rain lets up a little bit, I will uh, we'll go over there and take a look at things. But, uh, you know, this is kind of a neat little story about Anne. Um, Anne was uh, 1965. She bought uh, 32 acres on this Lake Twitchell, or Twitchell Lake, I guess it's called. And with the help of a few friends, built this log cabin. That's the remains of it are uh, the floor is still there. The uh, cabin was torn down piece by piece during the winter of 2014 and 15, and taken to the Adirondack Museum in Blue Mountain Lake. And I wanted to get over there during this trip to get some pictures of it and everything, but uh, because of the COVID-19 situation, they closed for the year. So. But uh, she called her cabin here uh, West of the Winds. And it was an off-grid cabin. There was no running water. And this is where she penned uh, a lot of her books right in here. She did have another cabin that is uh, not on site here. But the, it's over, I think, this way. There's a trail to it. And uh, the only way to get to this cabin is to paddle... Twitchell Lake in the summer or snowmobile or ski 
in the winter. She kept a truck down right where uh, the boat launch is, and from my from what I hear, it wasn't a it was a pretty beat up truck. But uh, when Ann died in 2011, um, she had a good friend who was also a DEC officer, and that friend of hers grew up in this area and has known Ann since she was a little kid, and she was the uh, executor of the will, and she made sure that the uh, the property um follow Dan's wishes basically it's a uh Ann was you know conservationist and, and environmentalist and uh cared very deeply about the Adirondacks she was uh she was per on the Adirondack Park Agency she was a commissioner on there and you know as I sit here now I really get a sense of I really get a feeling it's hard to describe the feeling it's not a creepy feeling, like I'm being watched or I'm about to be tagged or something like that. But it's just a feeling out here I'm alone. There's nobody out else here. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of calm and peaceful here. I don't know what it is. But uh, the rain has let up some. And we'll go take a look here. They, there is a... Uh, there is a uh, plaque here, West of the Wild, home of Anne La Bastille, woods woman, author, ecologist. The cabin is the wellspring, the source, the hub of my existence. It gives me tranquility, a closeness of nature and wildlife, good health and fitness, a sense of security, the opportunity for the resourcefulness, reflection and creative thinking and 1933 to 2011 and you know it's hard to believe that uh, she lived here by herself for many years many many years and this is the cabin floor of the cabin just think how uh not a lot of space she lived here with her uh with her dog right there's the dish I know they left the dish here to pay uh, tribute to our German Shepherd. But, uh, you know, I've read about a lot of people coming here and staying the night. They set their tents up up here. And, you know, they feel that, just like I did, feel that I had to come here and pay homage to this lady because, you know, the more I read about her, the more I was intrigued. So the people that come here and stay the night, right, there's the old fire pit. And, oh yeah, there's the... The log benches that I've seen in pictures, but a lot of people who come here say that to, to get the full effect of this place, that you have to take a swim off the dock. And right down there's the dock. I don't know what it has to do with anything, but I've watched some videos and and read up on this, and Anne even talked about herself, you know, taking her morning dips off that dock, and because the the water, the Adirondack wild water, as she put it, is so beneficial to your well-being. So I'm just packed up the kayak and I'm going to take in some water before I head out. The skies are blue over here and a little bit gray over here. Raining on and off, but that's alright. I already got wet, so... So this is... Uh, Spent the last oh, a half hour or so just walking around, checking things out. There's a lean-to over this way, and uh, but you know, the more I read about Anne, the more I was intrigued by you know how she did it up here. You know, not only you know you have all sorts of creatures up here. You know, you got your bears and occasional moose and your deer but uh, probably what's worse than that for about a month every spring is the Adirondack black flies and she must have came up with some way to battle them because they would have been attacking you as soon as you walked out the door I've been there and it is you just breathe and you'll breathe them in that's how many swarm around you but uh, this is something I kind of wish that I would have taken up paddling 15 years ago because I would have paddled up here just to meet her. 
that's how intrigued I am. I mean, just I'm not intrigued. I'm intrigued, but I'm also amazed how she lived up here. Um, I think I can really much of relate of coming up here and living up here. The Adirondack winters are harsh, so she survived a lot of winters up here in this cabin, and probably well, that's why the cabin is so small because it's easier to heat. Such a small space, but. Uh, just imagine, you know, January, and the wind whipping across the lake. You know, it's 10 below zero, but the wind chill is 50 below. Living up here by yourself. And uh, there will be, a, there is a neat video of Ann that is uh, PBS did, the local PBS station did many years ago and I'll put a link to that below it's 26 minutes and if you uh, if you really want to see how Ann lived and and how she was as a person they they came up here and she met them right on the dock and uh, she talked about the wild water in that video too but uh, it's 26 minutes and it'll give you a better sense about Ann than my video here <laughs> If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to follow the adventure. Thanks for joining.